okay now that we have looked at the idea of hierarchical design the next type of design process in some sense uh, involves breaking up the design into two different and interconnected parts which can be referred to as the control and data path so what does this refer to the data path is usually referred to is usually a term used to refer to the computation being performed by a piece of digital logic right it's often combinational why, why i say often is you might for example have some parts of the computation as something which has sequential elements in it but in general the output pretty much clearly depends on the current inputs and nothing else right so an adder for example if i have two inputs two 8-bit inputs that fully determines what the output is going to be similarly for a multiplier now a multiplier could potentially be implemented as a multi multiple clock cycle circuit something which takes many clock cycles in order to generate the result but still the result depends only on the inputs it doesn't really depend on some other notion of state as far as the system is concerned right so there is an input there is a clearly defined output and that output pretty much depends on the input that is what we mean by the data path data path elements are typically things that only perform such computations but we know that very often in order to actually perform larger computations we also need to retain some notion of system state and system state typically goes into some kind of storage flip-flops what could the system state be it might even be the values of certain variables let's say that you are trying to solve a differential equation the present values of the various derivatives and the present values of the variables themselves or the time step all of those are going to be held somewhere in my system and i have an iterative algorithm that takes multiple cycles in order to go through and perform a computation right during that process the individual elements are being held in some kind of state uh, storage right which could be registers it could be memory it could either be a register file which is part of a cpu or it could be just some freestanding flip flops that are present somewhere in an fpga right but in addition to those variables there is also the present state of the system how many time steps have elapsed what part of my computation am i currently in right so that in turn is also captured by means of the state which then sort of goes and feeds back into the compute right so the variables the state variables as well as the present state itself goes feeds into the compute and then finally comes back to update the state into the next state have i finished my computation is there still something left to be done how should the variables that are representing the state be updated and so on right so here we basically have a notion of some kind of a finite state machine so the fsm provides control inputs to the compute and the compute in turn provides inputs to decide where the fsm should go next this is a very generic form of digital system architecture right and what we do is we refer to this as sort of the fsm plus data path architecture the alternate name is the data path plus control right where what we essentially mean is that the data path is something which pretty much just performs input to output transformations the control logic is something that tells the data path when to operate which inputs to operate upon and also detects when the output has been computed and can be moved into another location or output from the system this is a fundamental design pattern that is used in digital system design right it basically talks about the finite state machine to uh, perform control logic data path in order to perform computation and interface registers that basically allow different components of the system to talk to each other right benefits this notion of separation of concerns is again something that comes up in many engineering design contexts including software engineering but essentially what it says is that there is we have separated out functionality right we have identified one part of the circuit that needs to perform computation and another part that needs to perform control and we can now sit and sort of you know do separate timing optimization separate verification perhaps even resource sharing across these different aspects right so this is sort of the basic idea of why we want to do this kind of data path plus control type of design now let's take once again the example of a multiplier right but now i'm going to use another approach 
in this approach, what I'm going to say is that rather than sort of, you know, generating all the partial products at one shot and then just adding them together, I am going to have some kind of a register, right, which basically is going to keep my product as the value that it computes, right. And I'm going to have something which basically says add two values together. One is the old value of this register, right, but not quite the old value of the register. If you remember, right, what was it that we did when we had this product of 456 into 123? I had one partial product out here, right? And I had the second partial product out here. And effectively, what I did was the very first time, my register would have this value PPPP. After that, I would basically perhaps shift it to the right and add QQQQ. Right? So each time around what goes in over here is going to be the partial product. It then gets stored over here, comes back possibly with some shifting to account for the fact that you know I have this gap over here that I need to take care of. But over time, over basically n cycles, I would be able to generate all the bits that I want for my final product. So this is going to be a sequential process. It essentially takes n cycles in order to perform the work, right? One way of visualizing it is using a timing diagram. It would look roughly something like this. And basically the structure that I'm talking about over here is what I call a sequential multiplier. Now, what does a sequential multiplier do? It basically has a clock, right? It goes through multiple states. By default, it's in an idle state. Let's say that it gets a start signal at some point in time. It transitions out of idle into a state that I'm going to call multiply. Now, during that multiply state, it has a couple of different inputs. One of them is the add multiplicand input. This will become one if the multiplier bit that I'm trying to multiply for is a one, else it will be zero, right? Which basically tells me you don't need to add, you just need to sort of shift, right? And by just using this signal, I can decide whether or not to add. There is also another signal that basically goes high while the multiplication is active and tells me each of these clock cycles shift the multiplier or multiplicand or the partial product, whatever it is that you are appropriately implementing, either to the left or to the right, depending on how you are going about implementing your hardware, right? And finally, after everything is done over here, I also generate a done signal, probably for one clock cycle, go into a state where I generate this done signal and then switch back to my idle state. Okay. Now, if you look carefully at this, you will realize that state is an internal state corresponding to whatever FSM I'm designing. Start is an external input, which tells me when to perform my computation. Clear product, add multiplicand, shift multiplier are all the internal control signals, right? So these are all internal control signals. And this is an output, whereas start is an input of the system, right? So with this in mind, it's very clear that this is basically talking about the finite state machine. Interestingly enough, it tells you absolutely nothing about the computation. I have talked about this add multiplicand, but I have not actually talked about how I'm going to add two numbers together. I'm assuming that there's some piece of hardware that's capable of adding numbers together that is my data path, right? So the data path over here reduces to something which can perform addition when instructed to do so by the other signals, primarily the add multiplicand in this case, right? And as long as I have that, I will also have something which basically keeps updating my partial product or my product register. And when the done signal is over here, the output of that product register is the output of my actual multiplication, right? So the entire design process has changed from trying to optimize how my adders themselves work or something like that into designing the state machine and getting it to work the way that I would like it to. Now, the data path, like I said, consists of a number of different registers. There will be a multiplicand register that stores the multiplicand. There will be a multiplier register that stores the multiplier and shifts it as required 
and a product register that accumulates the partial product. The operations themselves being performed in the data path, one of them is addition, one of them is shifting, and the other is of course clearing the registers to their default values. Right? Each of these happens under some kind of control of the finite state machine. The addition is conditional, only when the add multiplicand signal is 1 is it going to add. The shift on the other hand is unconditional, any time that you are in the multiply state you need to shift. Right? So, it's, so it's sort of like a more output as long as you are in this state the shift output is going to be 1. Whereas addition says okay not only should I be in the multiply state I also need to have the input being equal to 1. Right? And finally the product regis uh, register can be reset to 0 by using a clear signal. We do not want to use the reset signal as such for doing this because reset is usually reserved for something that happens only when you power on the system for the first time. I want some way by which I can reset my computation after every such calculation to be ready for the next operation. Okay. Now you might think that you know the addition being conditional like this automatically means that the only way to implement it is in terms of a melee machine. Well, probably uh, that is going to be the most efficient. You could also have multiple states where you basically have one state which basically looks at whether this addition is to be performed uh, and then basically goes into one of two different states in one of which the addition would be performed in another which the, of which the addition would not be performed after which it then goes back to the same shift state that would perform the unconditional shifting. right? So, it is not absolutely necessary that this automatically implies a melee type of implementation, but it is probably going to be easier to think of and implement it as a melee machine. But as we have already discussed, there are certain drawbacks including you know the timing analysis and so on that come into play when you go with melee type designs. So, at the end of the day it is some kind of a trade off which one is the right way to go. Now, we obviously get some benefits of this separation right the separation of concerns one is modularity we have a control FSM and data path now they are separate modules. Reusability data path components can be reused in other designs. The control FSM logic could potentially be adapted for different algorithms, right? And we could optimize each of these independently. That's the best thing. And you might, for example, find that the control logic you want to optimize so that it's one hot encoded so that it runs extremely fast. The data path logic you might decide that you want to do it using some kind of an adder which perhaps has a lower power consumption than something that would be built by default and you could optimize them independently and then combine them back and have a correct functionality as well. Same way for the verification, right? once you have broken them down into separate modules just like in the case of hierarchical design, we would be able to verify them and then put them together independently. Now one thing, uh, it is not as though hierarchical design and this control FSM uh, control data path approach are complementary or opposites of each other, no they are not. They both essentially are different ways of looking at the problem and as should be obvious over here, the control plus data path itself is making use of the idea of hierarchy, right? it is sort of breaking things down hierarchically. It is just that in this case I have used the multiplier, the sequential multiplier as another way of designing a multiplication. That does not mean that these are different ways of solving the same problem, they both sort of overlap. right? The control data path decomposition can itself be seen as a form of hierarchy and within hierarchical designs itself you would find that there are sub modules that have their own control and data paths. So at the end of the day why would we do something like this? We have some kind of trade offs in the hardware. right? In this design with the control and data path we could potentially reuse resources. In the design that I showed you, we used basically a single adder plus a register in order to perform a multiplication. It does not matter whether it is 8 bits, 16 bits, 32 bits, it is just a single adder and a register. Of course, the size of the adder increases, but essentially you know the same thing, it is just that the state machine gets a little bit, may or may not get more complicated. The width of the individual operations may increase a little bit, but that is pretty much all that you need to know about. right? You do have extra control logic, you have more multiplexers, you have a finite state machine controller. But the interesting thing is the logic depth that you have is probably going to be less. You do not have to worry about for example a tree of adders, right? you pretty much have like one adder and one register. 
so it's very often possible to operate with faster clocks. On the other hand, it is also entirely possible that this system is going to be overall slower, right? For the same reason, the individual clock was faster, but on the other hand, it takes multiple clock cycles in order to get the same result, right? So that gives us more time required for performing the computation using this approach.